Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we shall discuss about a trader who has managed to compound his account from three and a half lakh rupees to seven hundred crores, all in a matter of eleven years. In the stock markets, we've heard so many times that wealth can only be generated by investing. Like you buy and you hold stocks, like Warren Buffett does, and generate wealth. But today I will share the journey of a trader who has compounded his account at 150% per annum for the past 11 years and generated a huge amount of wealth. In this video, we shall talk about his journey, his struggles, all of his mistakes and his advices to the new traders. Also, we'll see what kind of setups that he trades, what kind of risk management parameters he follows, what kind of daily routine he has. So in order to absorb all of this, and in order to understand his journey, please watch this video. The trader is from Sweden and he got involved in the stock market in 2010 as an investor. But in 2011, he shifted his focus towards trading. In his initial days, he used to work as a security guard uh, in a shopping mall and used to trade from his savings that, uh, that he generated. In the first few years, he blew up his trading account multiple times. But he learned from his mistakes and today in 2022, his account is worth about 700 crores. Today, we'll, journey, we'll witness whatever problems that he has faced, whatever struggles that he has witnessed. The name of this trader is Christian Kola Maggi from Sweden. His Twitter account is famous with the name Kola Maggi as his username. And in order to understand his journey I have utilized uh, the live streams that he publishes on Twitch various articles that has been shared on the internet and his website I have pulled all the information from these sources compiled it broke it down with my own parameters and today I will share with you all all the information that I'm that I have been able to synthesize from this so Colomag, he started in 2011 with $5,000 in his account, but within the few, first few months, he lost 90% of his account as he was a newcomer and he did not understand the particular nitty gritties of the market. But then he started again with a $4,000 account, which he wiped off again in a few months. And after that, he decided to borrow some money and even that he blew up in a matter of few months. Then he borrowed some more money and he went sideways for some time post which he started actually started making money from his trading account. However, he was noting that every time that he went belly up, the time taken was increasing in subsequent attempts. He started to observe where he was going wrong and started to learn from his mistakes. And when you start spending time in the markets, survival becomes easy. And it was no different for, for Kuala Maggi because it is always in the first few years the survival is difficult because you are not really comfortable with the setups but after two years of trading his account into May of 2013 was roughly 9100 his account was small but had now started to grow slowly and gradually in Jan 2018, he managed to grow his account to $1.4 million. Within the span of the next 1.5 years, he managed to grow his account by more than 100% to $4 million. But then he had to face a drawdown of roughly $1 million because he overstayed in some of the names due to which he had to face this drawdown. But as of now, in May of 2022, he has managed to grow his account in excess of 100 million. In March of 2021, when uh, it, it was roughly about 82 million dollars. Friends, Kuala Maggi's best year in terms of his performance was the year of 2020. According to him, 2020 was the best year uh, for swing trading after 1999-2000. And in his language, it was very easy money that was coming. He had not witnessed such easy markets for swing trading in 
in the last 20 years that he studied the markets. One of his largest winners was GME, in which in just a matter of two trades, he made some 25% of the total trading profits in the 10 years combined. Now, if you witness, if you just look at the chart of GME, it moved some 1000% in two days. And with a reasonable size or even a, with a larger size, the amount of impact that it can have on your portfolio is, is just phenomenal. And Kuala Maggie, after putting in years of hard work, was able to capitalize all of this in a matter of two trades. As per him, it is very important to understand what a stock and the overall market conditions are trying to say, and then you have to accordingly act according to it. These two steps can literally ensure that we take appropriate trading decisions. Although it is not really necessary that every time the market will reward us with the large gains. But whenever we go wrong, we have to accept it as a cost of doing business and move on. But majority of traders we've seen is, is that they try to impose their own view on the stock or the market. But the stock or the, the entire market doesn't does not really care about how we feel about it. Like the conditions right now are very bad. So if some stock is showing strength, we should pay extra attention to it so that when the market conditions returns to normal, it may become the next leader. So that's what Kola Maggi always tried to say that you have to pay extra attention to what the stock is trying to tell you and what the overall market conditions look like. One of the most prominent problems for a new trader is that they keep jumping from setup to setup because they still don't know which setup suits them the best. As per Paula Maggie, it is okay to do setup hopping in the initial years because you're trying to find out which is the setup you're most comfortable with. Once you find the setup, you have to put in thousands of hours studying the charts and perfect, perfecting its variations in order to become successful at it because any setup that you pick up you have to go back study the charts how it acts in a certain time frames how it moves in a certain time frames what kind of contractions it is offering what kind of moves it has given in the past but Paula Maggie made his first million from day trading and then made a gradual shift towards swing trading According to him, day trading is a very tiresome uh, job where you have to stay in the front of screen the entire day and hence he prefers to do swing trading more. However, the hardest part, the hardest part in, of swing trading is the ability to sit and do nothing, which is very contracting from what a day trader does because day trader usually takes a lot of trades during the day maybe two three five trades a day but in contrast swing traders have months and months of doing no activity when there are no setups available hence the hardest part of swing trading is able to do sit and do nothing one of the big reasons to avoid day trading is because the R multiple gains in day trading are smaller as compared to swing trading swing trading in day trading the usual R gains are two to four while in swing trading it is somewhere around 10 to 50. In day trading, when you're looking for two to three R gains, the accuracy has to be at least 50%. But in swing trading, when we are looking for five to 10 times gains, even with a, say a 30% win rate, you can actually make tons and tons of money. Hence, Kuala Maggie is mainly focused right now on the swing trading because he's usually looking at setups where the risk and the drawdowns are small but the gains in comparison to it are multifold times more hence even with a small win rate he can win Kuala Maggi's main edge is trading the flag breakouts as per him if you put in hours thousands of hours in trying to understand one setup and its variation then it can actually make you a lot of money so but what is a flag breakout and how can we use, use it as an edge? What are the nitty gritties involved in a flag breakout? What kind of a setup is a flag breakout? What kind of a move happens uh, in 
of flag what kind of sideways movement it offers how does a stock react after getting out from a flag so in order to understand that let's let's understand what he looks for in a flag his process is very focused if you if you trade random things then you are bound to get random results so what he wants is tightening up of a action relative strength the stock which is building higher lows and in such cases he tries to pay extra attention and tries to enter as soon as they start breaking out for this as mentioned previously also you have to put in hours and hours thousands of hours you have to go back and look at as many charts as you can in that is that have happened in the past once you do this the setup gets stored in your brain and you'll be able to have conviction and develop the edge in trading borrowed conviction never works in the market it's a sure short strategy to blow up paul maggi has gone through tens of thousands of charts going back to 1900s and stored them in a evernote file and this de- de- decade long effort has given him the tra- trading success that we are all seeing paul maggi wrote actually one of his large and one of the biggest winners that paul maggi has had in the uh, 10 years of trading that uh, he's been doing was one of the setup that he found in may of 2019 which is a very, very similar setup uh, a flag setup where that we just discussed was leads L- leds is the ticker symbol in may of 2019 it according to him it is a very one of the better examples for chart uh, for for flag for flag breakup if you go back and study history you will find that there will be a large volume back upside move post which the stock starts to go sideways and it takes support on the 10 and 20 m after which it breaks out again which call a maggie here refers to as the first base breakup if you go back and study big winners you will find these things in common for right stock selection you should try to find stock which can go up easily 20 30% only these names will can get you the large money that you want something which has an ability to four uh, ability to move 4 to 5% that cannot give you the large money that you want for this kola maggi uses the adr indicator and usually trades in stocks which have an adr of more than 5% and tries to find stock which can move 30 to 40% rather than a small move of 5 to 10% the selection of right stock is very important because even if you have a good setup even if you understood the setup but if after that you go and select a stock which has a very less chance of moving high percentages then you will not be able to grow your account as fast as you want to so as per him if you want to make large money you have to be in the fast moving names in order to find and in order to find the strong stock you have to scan for such strong stocks so what you want is that you want a list of stocks which have gone and made an explosive moves in the 1 3 and the 6 month in the last 1 3 and the 6 month and then try to find entries when they break out now ask yourself where will you make the large money do you want to trade stocks with 10% or the ones which have the odds of making 50% hence he always emphasizes that the best way to make money is to get early entries in the fast moving stocks so in order to have a alpha you need to trade the top moments momentum stocks that's where your edge is after you find the right stocks you just have to wait for the right market conditions i mean once you get the explosive stock the only way that you're going to make large money is when they go up in a good market so once you have the stock you have to wait for a good market you, you can't control the market but you can control the setups and the scans and the focus so when the stocks are there the setups are there but the market isn't right you have to wait because waiting in trading is a big part like 95% of trading is waiting especially in swing trading because
because there could be months where there is absolutely no setup available and if you try to enforce your view on the stock or on the market the market is going to slap you hard slam you down and that may cause a very large dent in your portfolio hence if you now that when you have clarity about setups in the stocks you have to wait for for your moment to strike if you have no margin of error at all times it means your edge is your edge in the market is very small hence it is important to focus on the big movers so you can have a comfortable margin of error because if you if your edge if your margin of error is very small that means your edge is extremely small and you won't be able to survive for long these were the few basic parameters about the setup which call a magi trade trade day out now once the edge is developed you have to wait for the right markets once you wait for the right market and you execute when you see your setups that's when you are going to make the large money moving on to the technical versus the fundamental everlasting debate technical analysis according to paul maggi is a thing which works and if you can actually combine the fundamental along with the technical that can be a great winning combination but even if you don't understand the technicals if you are just able to understand the flow of the money then it is not really necessary to know in depth about the fundamentals it is not really important to understand what is the inflation or the gdp or the other macro, macro factors which are going to look like unless you are trading with a more than a 100 million dollar account you in order to succeed at the markets according to paul mag you need to have set up clarity once that once the set up clarity is achieved you have to understand the difference between what is a good market and what is a bad market according to paul maggi it is very important to understand the difference between the two a good breakout setup may, may not work in a bad market as the conditions are not conducive for this all you have to look is the trend of the major index if they are trading above the 10 and the 20 ma these are the conditions suitable for that breakout trade to work and the easy money to be made however vice versa if the major indexes in the market if they are trading below the 10 and 20 then it is not really the period for easy money where it's been trading which where we just talked about that you can make easy money in good trending markets as per him a good market is when the market moves up consistently with shallow drawdowns so like just we talked that in a good trending market major indexes will be above the 10 and 20 like in 2019 of nasdaq where it was consistently up with very very shallow and very low drawdowns and even 2017 18 which was more of a sideways market but with less amount of volatility if a market goes sideways then for a few months for a few months it means that the market is building a base in 2015 like Kola Maggi went sideways for about nine months, but even then, even after going sideways for nine months and making no money, to, and no money or adding no money to his account for nine long months, even then he was managed to grow his account by more than hundred percent. So all you have to do is wait for the right market conditions. Once you have the setup, and hence, and the best time to buy stocks is after a multi-month sideways. sell off because that is that market will be the most conducive for swing trading in 2019 the market was very ideal for swing trading according to paul maggi and hence he had doubled his account in a matter of 4 to 5 months and all of this that we are talking about is of the us markets because Paul Maggi, although he trades from Sweden, he is primarily trading the U.S. markets. Nothing else. Paul Maggi also says that when the 10 and 20 moving average, if they are downtrending, then it makes very little sense in buying the breakout, as the odd 
rewards of the breakout working are going to be very low in simple terms in simple terms let's just simplify that when you have plenty of setups as per your criteria that is the best sign according to Paula Magi to go aggressively long for example like the current market conditions in the current market conditions there are very few setups which are available most of the major indexes are trading below the 10 and 20 m and hence the number of setups available in the markets are also very less hence it is a very clear direction from the markets that it is not the right time or not the conducive markets for swing trading Colomagi also says that the markets have remained the same since years so he has analyzed all a lot many tens and thousands of charts going back to 1900s so if you incurring if you are incurring any losses then it is you are the person who is responsible for that because the same patterns are actually repeating themselves over and over and over again just the stocks are changing the setups are still the same if you go back and study some of the large winners of the 1920s of the 1970s or the tech boom or the 2078 real estate boom or the 2020 boom everywhere the setups are the same just the actors change hence the markets don't change and the patterns don't, don't change it's the participants that change now coming to the setups according to column Mag, it is not really possible for everyone to create their own setup so you can copy the setups from some other successful traders and understand the, the setups by putting in the hours and looking at tens and thousands of charts like from Mark Minovini's VCP or the Colas 10 and 20 or uh, Pradeep Pandey's Momentum Burst all of these setups are available you just have to select one setup go look at the history look at tens and thousands of charts and develop your own Paula Maggi basically trades three setups. He has flag, earnings based, episodic pivots, and the mean reverse and shorts. He only trades these setups. Maximum number of times he is trading flags, which which is available on every time frame. I mean, if you go back and if you look at some charts in on a daily time frame, on an hourly time frame, on a monthly time frame, even on a thirty minute time frame you will find that flags are everywhere and they are moving in a similar fashion on every time frame with the similar setups so it is very imp important to understand when, when you should you have to understand these setups in detail you have to put in the hours you have to look at thousands and thousands of charts then it, it will be easy for you to identify them once the setup is clear, it is important to understand that when you should try and avoid the setup. According to Paula Maggie, if you are a swing trader and when the market conditions are not good, then you should try to avoid trading these breakouts. Like with a simple rule that we just discussed about that when the major index are trading below the 10 and 20, the download, downward sloping M is, it's actually a time to step away from the trades and scale back in size. When the markets are slow, what does he do? What does he do? Does he buy a breakout in a bad market? No, in most of the times in bad market is a simple definition that we just discussed that the markets are trading below the 10 and the 20 moving average. In such times, the odds of that breakout working are any which is very low. Hence, it's better that you avoid trading such setups. Like currently on the 10th May 2022, the Nifty is below the 10 and the 20 moving average. There might be some setups available in the markets. Do you trade them? Do you go aggressive long in them? No. What do you do? You avoid them. How, but how do you develop such patience? It is very important to maintain the mental capital. Because when the market
habits are bad the conditions are not conducive for swing you have to step away from the market and allow the other people to take trades and drain out their energy while you patiently wait for the right kind of market where you can make easy money on your capital just because the market is open does not mean that you have to go or go there and punch in the trade because trading is 95% of waiting game where once your setup is developed once you've understood once you've developed the edge you need to have a lot of patience as a swing trader because that is what sets up the move big moves later polamaki has repeatedly said this in a lot of his streams that he's here to make money and not just to punch in the trades just because the market is open is not the reason to go ahead and punch in trade after trade you have to wait for the setups you have to wait for the right kind of market conditions if you want if you want to make millions you need to have extreme amount of patience and that is why waiting game is a major skill that not all traders have according to paul amik because setup is something which can be taught but patience you have to develop on your own so that when good markets return you have the right mental framework to go back and start without any dent on your mental health as well as the financial health moving on the scholar magic hold on to losses according to lot of the information which has been published he hates holding on to the losses according to him he has large number of small losses and then one large winner which covers all of his losses and makes him much more money his edge is 15 small losses and then two extremely large winners he has said repeatedly in his stream that a lot of the breakout that he buys fails but he still after so many years has made so much money and has been so much successful why because he has kept his losses small and all his winners have been extremely big have been extremely big to take care of the losses and make him much more money hence it is very important to keep your losses small keep your r multiples high to make large amount of money moving on does he vary his position size does the position size is similar on every trade according to him when you have a larger conviction on a setup in such cases the size should be large because that's how you make large money and grow your account fast but in order to build conviction can it be done overnight no so again as we've discussed so many times in this video you have to go back and study the past charts and understand the setups when your account is small all you have to do is consistently look for singles and grow your account you don't have to look for that home run trades every day you just have to go back in history study the charts study the setup get get your conviction on it and then consistently try to take the singles in your small account because if you try to go for a home run trades with less conviction then you are not going to make that large of a money that Paula Maggi has made hence the main difference between trading a small account and trading a big account is that in small accounts you have to once you've understood the set and you get got the clarity you just have to take consistent singles moving on is is trading really easy according to paul maggi if trading were that simple everyone would be just trading but is it that easy according to paul maggi when you are not making as much money as a trader your mental health does get affected a lot because in the first 3 to 4 years of his trading he was actually very depressed because he was not making a lot amount of money suddenly you will feel that the other aspects of the life are not also great and you will not be in a very proper mental shape 
hence trading is not really easy it's simple but it's not easy in order to be really successful you have to be really clear as to what you really want because trading as a profession in general involves taking a lot of losses lots of small losses lots of points where the markets are not really conducive for your type of trading and in such environments it requires a lot of inactivity from the side which causes less amount of money to be made and hence it, it can be depressing and it can become challenging for anyone who is just starting out now moving on let's talk about how Ola Maggi has his self ruling established so once you have understood the setups and you've taken an entries into a stock the booking of profits is exam is a very important task so Ola Maggi usually sells some of his quantities after 3 to 5 days of the move and after that he tries to trail the remaining quantity with a key moving average it, because the main reason is that he doesn't want to miss out on the stock which can actually give 100% move 200% move if he has taken if he has taken entry in such stocks and if he enter uh, sells at 10 20% he will not make the large amount of money because his r has r gains will be very less and according to him trading is all about small losses and big gains trading is a is a game of probability wherein you just have to put the odds in your favor but how do you put your odds in your favor it again boils down to the fact that do you have the set of clarity in your head have you studied the history have you understood the nitty gritties and the variations of the setup if you have then with the proper risk management your losses will be small and your gains will be big enough to compensate for your losses and make you money usually his journal is filled with a sea of red because he takes so many losses so many small losses rather and very few stocks give him extreme large gains his win rate probably is in the area of 30% and even then he has compounded at such a fast pace this is a very important thing to understand guys small losses and large gains imagine like this if you take 100 trades with 60 wrong 40 right but every time you take a right trade you make 3 every time you lose a trade you make 1 what's what's the result Few of his large trades in 2019 were in GT where he traded with a one dollar stock and it turned out to be a 30 yard trade. He made 30 times his risk. Similar one of his trade was I think in Roku in 2019 where where the end the risk was less than a dollar and he made some 20 to 30 times on that risk. This parameter again focuses on the part that your losses have to be small and your gains have to be big, hence your risk reward multiple will be large. When we talk about 10 to 50 hour gains, it is very important to understand here that it can be done when you have maximum position size bought at a single price you do not have to pyramid and ruin your average because once you pyramid a stock it might and it does not go as per your view it might kill your gains that you already have you just have to get your setup right in your head and then wait for the right market conditions to come and when the right kind of market conditions come you just have to sell according to the rules and make money this is what trading is all about you can you 
can be wrong 8 out of 10 times and still make money but all of this requires patience moving on as per him the drawdowns that he majorly faced in the earlier part were because of him shorting the parabolic shots according to him the biggest drawdowns usually come after there is there has been a great run in the market like after a multi month move in the market when the market pulls back or reverses a lot of its gain that's when you get a lot of drawdowns and if according to call and according to call maggie if you are not taking risk or uh, if you are not taking you are not facing any kind of drawdown then it is only because that you are not actually taking any risk because think about it if if most of the times when the markets fall your account does not fall at all not even 1% that only means that you are not taking any risk but after all this why does Kuala Maggi still trade what's the drive that makes him still trade because he already has 100 million in his account but why does he still trade the big reason for this is that Kuala Maggi still searches for that big home run trades wherein the risk is small the position size is large and if the position goes in your favor you make a lot of money that's the drive which still due to which he still trades because it gives him so much of satisfaction and a feeling that after building a size in a stock with a limited risk if it goes in your favor you make a lot of money like in AMC which he traded in 2020 it was an extremely large trade for him and these are the reasons why Colin Maggi is still successful as per him you, you have to take the responsibility for your losses if we start blaming ourselves that's when we start finding the reasons of what what is actually going wrong with our trading if most of the times we are blaming the market market conditions or the external macro factors but if we start blaming ourselves trying to understand what what we are doing wrong as a trader that's the stepping stone for success because your trading setups not stocks so the main reason why you are failing is because you do not have an understanding of the setup hence if you want to be an extremely profitable trader according to Paula Maggie need to be a leader and you need to take steps in order to understand such setups according to Kuala Maggi if you want to make extreme amount of money maybe you just need two to three extreme large winners in your portfolio during a year and in order to find that you have to study the history and put in thousands of hours looking at the same charts and the same patterns all over all over again like when he found out about uh, Pradeep Bonde in 2011 or 12 he went back and studied every blog that Pradeep Bonde had written on his website since his inception similarly when he found out about Mark Minervini Kola Maggi went ahead and read every single article that Minervini had published, every single book that he had published, he even subscribed to his uh, to Minervini's private access and read everything that there was. Similarly, when he found out about Dan Zanger, he absolutely absorbed everything that Dan Zanger had written since his inception. And these are the hard work that the Kuala Maggi has put in over the years which makes him so successful in the stock markets. Hence guys, if anyone is looking over to Kuala Maggi as an inspiration, also look at the amount of hard work that he has put in over a course of decade to become so much of successful.
all the content that I've taken in this video are from the various interviews that he has given, the articles that he has written, his Twitter profile, his Twitch, and I'll be making one more video on the trading resources for Paula Maggie uh, in in some in some upcoming days, from which where you can learn. Now, if you if we have to put concise the entire video, I'll only say this that if you are a budding Paula Maggie type flag trading trader and you want to become successful, you have to go back and study. I have repeated this over a thousand times because Paula Maggie has repeated this over a thousand times. Please make sure you subscribe to this channel and thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked it. If there are any feedbacks or comments that you want to give, please do so in the comment section and let me know what what you like, what you didn't like. 